Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the October 4th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting at the Town of Weathersfield. Uh, would the clerk do the roll call? Uh, Chairman Harley. Here. Vice Chairman Margiana. Here. Clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes. Mr. Reichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Nope. Mr. Homicki. Nope. Mr. Dean. No. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Here. Mr. Silver. Not here. Okay. So if my math is correct, we have eight and everybody's participating. First item is uh, item 3.1, a public hearing, application number 1920-16-Z, Michael and Beatrice Hammond, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.5, accessory uses, to park a recreational vehicle larger than permitted, and for the storage of three trailers in a residential zone at 120 Harding Street. This is continued from the last meeting. Would the applicant care to join us? Uh, for those in attendance, public hearings <clears throat> will operate this way. We will have the applicant uh, make a presentation to the commission. The commission will ask questions of the applicant when we are uh, comfortable that we've at least got part of the, the, uh, the story on record. We will turn to the public and ask for their input into the issue. We will then probably come back to the applicant and have them address the comments that they heard and follow up with any additional questions. If we feel comfortable that uh, we have all the information we're going to or that we need to uh, make a decision, we will choose to close the hearing and then we will deliberate and, uh, and make motions on that uh, request. All righty, so that's how the process works. Would the applicant uh, like to kind of pick up where they started last time? You gave us a proposal. We sure. asked you to uh, hook up with our zoning office and, and see what you could come to so that we didn't have to sit and try and craft something while we sat here. Sure, sure. Um, this is a revision of the proposal for the special permit that we first presented on September 7th. Um, we are the owners at 120 Harden Street. Um, we'd, like to, we'd like you to, um, to permit us to store a trailer greater than 18 feet and to allow the storage of one additional trailer, the boat and trailer in our yard within the enclosed fence area. Um, I know in your packets you probably have some pictures. I made one packet of colored pictures to show some more detail. So they're kind of separated into categories, which you'll understand as I go through. Um, we've decided to sell and remove the snowmobile trailer that we previously had requested to keep. Um, we've spoken to uh, zoning enforcement, uh, Justin LaFontaine, he stated that he can grant us 60 days from this hearing to remove that trailer, and our emails uh, with him are enclosed in the proposal. Um, we furthermore proposed to move the boat and trailer to what is now the current location of the, where the snowmobile trailer was next to the fence. In addition, we will excavate the yard down several inches in that area so the trailer sits level and below the top of the fence. We believe the combination of excavating the ground and moving the boat closer to the fence will make the boat much less visible from outside the yard. Um, the, the yard does uh, the grade, um, grades up towards the house. So where the boat now sits is actually at a higher elevation um, than where it would sit next to the fence in addition by excavating down. Um, it also, because of the grade, it sits at an angle. It would sit level, um, making it um, um, much, much less visible from, uh, from outside the uh, yard. Um, you can see that in some of the pictures of the boat. You can see the angle of the trailer, and uh, you can see how if we move it closer. There's also some pictures showing the measurements of both the trailer, the boat trailer, and the boat. Um, we will also plant five to six Cleveland pear trees outside the fence. We picked this tree because we felt that the shape of the branches and its rate of growth provide the desired effect in the shortest period of time. While I understand that screening will decrease in the winter, my research shows that it will be among the first deciduous trees to bloom in the spring and the last to lose its leaves. We had originally considered evergreens to screen the yard. The issue we have is we have a large double gate that we can't plant in front of for obvious reasons. My thought was to plant along the fence on either side of the gate. I hope that as the trees mature, the crowns of the two trees will essentially meet on either side of the gate and provide some level of screening while still leaving the gate usable. I was concerned evergreens would grow essentially straight up and provide no screening at all in the area of the gate. I did some research on pear trees and I found the Cleveland pears are relatively new ornamental pears. It is said to be much stronger than the Bradford pear that is commonly used. 
We did confer with the Wethersfield Tree Warden, Corey Christians, on this matter. Um, his emails between us are also enclosed in your packet. Um, on the pictures that are marked fence, you'll see uh, along the fence uh, some orange ribbons attached to the fence. Those are the approximate locations for the trees. Um, they recommend uh, the trees be placed between 12 and 15 feet apart. That's what those ribbons are. They're about 12 to 15 feet apart. Um, depending on the size of the trees, we'd either go with five or six trees. You can also see um, some pictures of uh, what the mature trees look like. There's also a picture in there of a Cleveland pear that is uh, um, planted in the front yard of a home on, uh, on, on um, Crystal. Uh, it was only planted last spring, and you can see the size of it already. They, they, are, they do grow quickly. It's one of the reasons that, uh, that Mr. Christian said this would probably be a, uh, a good choice for this because of how quickly they grow. Um, I met with uh, Peter Gillespie, Denise Bradley, and Justin LaFontaine at our residence on 9-13-16. During that visit, we discussed alternate locations for the trailer and the yard. Due to other existing items in the yard, our shed, our patio, hot tub, a large tree in our garden. It was determined that the current and proposed location for the boat were probably the best for the trailers, given a special permit approval. It was also determined that even without the existence of those other items, that moving the trailers further back in the yard would in fact make them more visible, not less visible. This is due to the grade of the yard that would make them higher in elevation than their current location. They would also be further from the fence, thus it would provide less cover, and lastly, the current location of the RV is blocked from view from two angles due to the alcove created by the house. If you look at the pictures that, that are marked inside yard, you'll see the various things in our yard, placement of the trailer within the yard, and uh, um, there's some angles there that show looking towards the street, looking away from the street, and uh, like I said, the other items in the yard. We have done some research on storing the trailers off-site. The cost is not small and would potentially make it difficult for us to keep them. The convenience of having the RV on our property also makes it possible to maintain the security of the RV, plus make it convenient to service, pack and unpack, and leave more time for our camping trips. We bought the boat, the boat in hope of refurbishing it this fall and next spring. It was a project both my wife and I are looking forward to. We also purchased the boat in order to launch it in Weathersfield Cove. In our minds, one of the benefits of living here in Weathersfield. Keeping it off-site would make both of those much more difficult. And quite honestly, I would also, if I'm going to have to pay property taxes on these vehicles, I'd like to pay them to the town of Weathersfield, not to whatever town that I would end up storing them in if, if this is denied. My wife and I feel we are doing our due diligence to make our trailers as acceptable as possible. We have spent over $7,000 on our fence and are willing to spend more to excavate the yard and plant trees to lessen the impact on our neighbors. While we understand we cannot make them completely invisible, we believe that the proposed locations make them as unobtrusive unobtrusive as possible, and the addition of the trees will screen the view even more. We have also included pictures from outside the fence, showing the view from several angles. While certainly not invisible, the trailer does blend in somewhat with the white trailer with the white home from the view from across from the street. You can also see views down the street from the corner of Hardings and Cummings, and also in those pictures, a view approaching from the tail. <coughs> While we understand they're not everyone's idea of something they want to look at, we do not <coughs> believe they rise to the level of being an eyesore. The camper is nearly new, well-maintained, and a large investment for our family. While it is 24 feet long, we believe its impact over an 18-foot RV, which would be allowable, is minimal. You can see in the pictures a picture of a very similar uh, uh, RV, which is 18 feet long, which, which would be allowable. And I think from a front view, you can see there's, there's very little difference. RVs are becoming very popular, as shown in the data that I've also given you. Sales are up as other vacations have become out of reach for so many. For the price of renting a house for two weeks on the Cape, a family can purchase a decent used RV. We hope the Commission will consider this in making a decision on our, as well as other future permits. We'd like to thank those neighbors who wrote letters or spoke on our behalf of the hearing. Their support is more important than they know. I have spoken with our, with our, with our neighbor, Adam. And while we may not agree on what the outcome of this proposal should be, we do seem to agree that being good neighbors is important. We all have to look at other people's stuff. Sheds, solar panels, playscapes, wood piles, collections of yard ornaments, brightly colored and poorly maintained homes. I suppose the trick is to maintain the balance of the homeowners' wants and needs and of those of our neighborhood. 
We hope we have made our case and that you will consider approving our application for a special permit tonight. Thank you very much for your time. Right. Thank you. So, so, so before you go there, George, uh, there are three individuals with us who were not participating, did not participate last time, Dave, George, and Jim. At sooner or later, I'll be asking if you're comfortable with the voting process. Um, I, I will not be participating in the decision. I may be participating in any discussion. Okay. And the reason for that, I don't think I was out there when the commission viewed the site and the field, did they? <clears throat> With the discussion that went on? What, no. Was that the case or not? No. I read that the, and I thought in some minutes. No, the commission did not go out there. The applicant okay. met with okay. staff. Okay. I've read all the stuff. But, uh, all right, well, I'll leave it up to you I as we go on. Decide how comfortable I feel. Okay. So there is one more piece of correspondence from a neighbor, uh, from Melissa and Susan St. John. It is a, um, a, a positive or a, they don't have any problems with the, the application. There are additional uh, email correspondence. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, email correspondence from the staff. And then there is also one from Mike and Diane Salaman of Cummings, again, in support of the, uh, in support of the application. All right, uh, questions. Go ahead, George. Yeah, um, I'd like to ask a question uh, along this line. Uh, do you feel uh, regulations are fair at this point? even though uh, you're not abiding by them, but the point is you're trying. Do you feel our regulations should change? Yes, sir. Our, wait a minute, let me finish. For example, uh, the length of RV vehicles, for one thing, uh, or the height, or something of that nature. And then a uh, second part of this, my question would be, uh, why didn't you come in and ask for a change of our regulations? Um. Quite honestly, I was not, I did not know of the regulation until I was cited. Um, so that's, that's a simple answer to the reason I didn't come no, in initially. That makes sense to me, yeah. Um, I, I do think 18 feet is very conservative for a, for a trailer. Um, I don't know what the number should be. I understand maybe there needs to be some oversight. I can understand you can't make it unlimited, but I will say that there are very few RVs out there that would, that would fall within that, those numbers right now. I mean, in other words, most of them are over 18 feet? Most of them are over 18 feet. The new ones? The new ones, that's correct. Or the ones that are sold in the market, more or less, right now, used or new? That's correct. I mean, I, okay. I, have, what, a what brochure, what, I have a brochure for the Let brand. Let me ask you a question. What do they generally run? They've got the range? I would, I would say, it, Average is probably somewhere in the range of, of 26 to 32, 33 really? feet, something, something like that. I mean, I have a brochure for the company that I bought my RV from, and of all the models, um, I think there's only one that would meet the regulations <laughs> of the dozen or 14 models they sell. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I, I, I just want to make a comment. I appreciate you making the effort to package it and bring us back with another proposal. Um, if there are no questions, I'm going to move to the public. All right. Thank you. Is there somebody from the public who would like to speak on this application? Um, for those who would might who might be speaking later on in the evening, there is a sign-up sheet. That's what he's he's doing. Okay. If you could help us in that regard when the time comes. Um, good evening. My name is Adam De Maria. I reside at 52 Cummings Avenue in Weathersfield. Um, I spoke at the last hearing. 
um, and also submitted uh, my own documentation and my own photographs um, from my, my vantage view or my vantage point. Um, so after having read and listened to the homeowner's revised proposal, I still firmly reject the notion of a special permit being issued. As the homeowner said in their statement, the pear trees will not provide adequate screening, especially in the winter when the trees lose their leaves. Furthermore, the homeowner states that they cannot plant any trees in front of the gate they created to move the 20 feet, 25 foot RV in and out, which is in the exact location that the RV is most visible from my house. So the pear trees will not provide adequate screening for, of the RV and it is only presumptuous that the trees planted on the sides of the gate will grow in such a way that would block the RV from my view. Mike, one of the homeowners, did stop by my house and stated that we should continue to be good neighbors. While I agreed with that and extended a handshake, this in no way means that I support the proposal. I'm still deeply worried about the devaluation of the single biggest investment I have made and the thousands of dollars this could cost me if I choose to sell my home in the future. My real estate agent, Tony, agrees and specifically stated that the view of a 25-foot RV from my picture window will make for a very hard resell. I like to think that I'm a reasonable person. I think that it is reasonable for the homeowner to store a boat if it is properly hidden or screened. However, I do not think it is reasonable to have a 25-foot RV stored in their lawn with little or no screening where it needs it the most. I also think it is unreasonable for such a large vehicle to be entering and exiting their property right in front of my driveway. Again, I strongly believe that there are reasons that the town zoning regulations are in place and that they should be adequately enforced. I believe that these regulations are in place to protect our homes as they're our biggest investments. I think we as a neighborhood and community have to ask ourselves, where does it end? If we can all just ask for special permits to make both regulations and violations go away. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any, any questions? All right, thank you, Adam. You're welcome. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who wishes to speak on this application? All right, hearing none, join us again. Um, I don't know if there's much there that you could actually respond to, um, but if you have something to offer, please do so. No, I don't really know if there's anything I can <clears throat> that respond to that Adam said. I obviously disagree with him, um, you know, I, but I don't know that I have anything directly to respond to him. All right, thank you. Further question, go ahead. Yeah, quick question. Uh, in your presentation, you mentioned that you had investigated storing your camper off-site. Mm -hmm. um, and you had talked about the costs. Can you yeah, expand any, on that? Any, anywhere, from, anywhere from $100 to $120 a month, depending on where you go. Um, there are some places that are more like in the, in the 90, 85, 90, but you're getting into like Vernon and Tolland. So considerably further away, um, but anywhere a reasonable distance from home seems to be in the hundred dollar range, hundred dollars per month range, hundred, hundred and twenty. Is there a hardship case why you couldn't potentially uh, take that trailer and store it? I mean, it I've, you know, it's it it is another hundred dollars a month and that would be difficult for us to come up with. Um, I don't know that it would be impossible, but it would be difficult, and it's it is also the security of the area. I mean, I. I, uh, I have a storage area and it's been broken into twice and that's this inside a secured area not a out camper outside so there is there is some concern there too that that is parked outside and with with little you know little to keep somebody from going into it I, mean, I guess my concern is there, I know there's a number of residents in the town of Wethersfield that have campers over 18 feet I don't know how many are re actually registered in town uh, and they're actually storing it off-site um, you know, trying to justify you know, why we would expand or allow a special uh, exception to this case versus all the other residents that are, again, obliging by the, by the uh, permit application. So, um, 
it's okay. Yeah, that's it. No further questions. George? Yeah. Um, you said in your that you wanted to excavate the yard down several inches. What do you mean several? What does that do? It just the the if you if you look at the pictures of the snowmobile trailer, you can see that it sits on an angle because there is a, a change in elevation there. By taking it down just three to four inches, it will bring it level and will drop it down below the sight line of the fence, I believe. It will um, drop it below the top of the well, fence. Well, it's already, if you look at the measurement, it's already below the fence. The, the boat is. The boat, the boat is, is, is about uh, five feet, eight I, I inches tall. I thought the tall. pictures I saw in here, it was still above. But the boat, not the RV. The not, not the RV and not the snowmobile trailer, okay. the boat. The, the, boat is, the boat is about five feet, eight inches and the, the, the fence is six feet. So it already sits below. By excavating, it'll bring it down several more inches below the, the top really? of the fence. Even though I was over there today and I... Yeah. What, you, what you saw was the snowmobile trailer. <coughs> okay. Yeah, when we, when we went out, it does, the property does slope. I actually um, suggested that if he switches locations um, and excavates down, uh, it would not be visible to the neighbor. So. Um, it's a, just a slight difference. So, how many inches? I, at the most, I would say six inches. Mm -hmm. It's probably less less than that. It just gets it down low enough to be. What are you recommending? So I re so I recommend he he offered to get rid of the uh, snowmobile trailer, take the boat which is on a trailer and swap places with it, put it against the fence and excavate down, uh, put some stone or something so that you know there's a material there, and it would not be visible. Does he have material under these now? I'm trying to remember, I do uh, under the un RV. Under the RV, right. But not I under the other under two. under the RV. My plan was in the spring we, we put stone down for underneath the RV. The plan was to put it under the other ones. When I was sighted, we stopped work because I wasn't going to spend more money on, on a surfacing if we weren't going to be able to keep them there. But yes. There is, there is stone underneath the RV. There is a driveway there, a stone driveway. So stone parking area, excuse me. What is, what's the lifespan of an RV? I mean, how long do they? I mean, there's, there's ones out there that are 30, 40 years old. I mean, I guess it depends how well you take care of it. Mm. What was that? What's the I, you know. I'm not an RV person. I just wondered how long they lasted. I would say probably more in the vicinity. Most people keep them in the 10 to 15. How, how long has your, your trailer been there? Uh, we took delivery of it uh, April of last year. So, oh, seven, so 18 new. months. Okay. Interesting. How, how about, never mind, you can't answer this one. I don't think. Maybe you can. Uh, there were at least a couple of other uh, trailers in the neighborhood that we were involved with, including one mm -hmm. other tonight. Um, are those been around longer than a couple of years? I don't know. We don't know. We've okay. only lived in the property for hand. about four years. It's an unfair years, question, but I thought I'd ask you. Other commissioners? Any other questions? So I, so I have a question. Yeah, um, so let me get this straight. Um, when you do your uh, lowering mm -hmm. of, of doing a little bit of excavation, mm -hmm. you spoke about lowering where your boat is going to be. Mm -hmm. What about when you're, where your trailer is going to be? Was, I'm, I'm, I might have missed that. No, it, it's going to be at the same it, height the, the it trailer, is now. There really isn't much I can do with, with the RV. I mean, I could excavate down, but it, it is visible above it the is fence. And there's it is obviously, there's no way to excavate enough of that to be not be visible above the fence. So, so because of that, that's mm -hmm. why you're proposing those pear trees. That's correct. So that you hopefully you'd be able to like have a canopy in the area where the gate is, and it, sh it should be provide some sort of screening. Some screening. I, I understand it's not going to make it invisible, mm -hmm. but I. But the after speaking with yeah. the tree warden, you know the evergreens are going to go straight up on either side of the, and provide zero screening in front of the gate. The, the pear trees um, are one of the reasons we chose them is because they grow. They're very brown. And once they mature a little bit, I'm hoping that canopy will provide some, some screening. I, I understand it's not going to make it invisible. 
and I understand it won't provide screening in the winter. I'm, but an evergreen won't do anything. Well, I, I appreciate all your effort in uh, d documenting all this information in a well-detailed application, I think, and, and also all the different ideas you chose, even meeting with, with our uh, planning officer. So I appreciate all those efforts. And I do think I drove by there today, and I, for some reason I did think that it, it looked better than when we first had the application a month ago or so. So those are my thoughts. <laughs> Welcome back, George. I'm sorry. Uh, again, not being at the first hearing. This might have come up already, or I didn't hear it, whatever. Um, did your real estate agent, or did somebody, did you ever check with the town before purchasing this particular piece When of we purchased the house, we owned another RV, a different RV, which we've since sold, <coughs> and a snowmobile trailer. Um, and quite honestly, no, I did not right. check with the town. I had lived in Wallingford where I was able to put both in my backyard. It just wasn't something that occurred to me, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. And yet, yet you put up the fence subsequent to buying it a year and a half ago? No, we put up, yes. But the fence was put up more for our dogs we, than, than the camper. We did go with a six-foot fence as opposed to a four-foot fence because we understood that it, it may it, that that it may bother some people, and that would at least help. But the fence was put up primarily for our dogs. Okay, thank you. Do you cover it during the winter? Yes, I will be this year. I did not last year. I've purchased a cover to cover it this winter. Yes. And the bills. <coughs> So I, I, I must admit, I'm still struggling with the in perpetuity, right? When we, when we do these things on the land records, they, they tend to be there forever, right? We can put time frames on them, but it's, it's forever. The, the person after you can have one. Um, so, so sometimes we put durations on these things if we approve them. But it's still a corner lot, and the corner lots are the worst type of lots that, you know, they present the biggest hurdle challenge to the property owner for one of these things, right? And they are the most visible lots to your neighbors. Uh, there's not a lot of opposition, though there is one primary opposition and they get to look at it, right? So I'm struggling with giving an approval when I know that there's gonna be another corner lot, you know, that comes before us very soon. You know, when I think of $100 a month, I don't see that as a huge hurdle. Um, and the idea that a that a, a vehicle like this lasts for years and years and years, maybe you don't, and, and you know, in this neighborhood, that kind of thing, but still, you know, what's, I hope you enjoy Weathersfield and you're here for 25 years. If that vehicle's here for 25 years, that's, you know, that would be disappointing to me if I were to give you this application, right? So I'm looking, at least in my own mind, for a way to not only make it better today, but not for it not to be there forever. Um, and I, and I, that's, that's me talking personally. Um, well, I mean, at, at the last meeting, <clears throat> you, you approved a, a person's uh, vehicle and you put a limit on it. You asked them to come back and review it. I would not be opposed to that. Um, you know, if that would be something that would, that would, that would help this. I'd certainly be willing to come back in three years, five years, whatever it would be. I, I can't tell you if I'll have the camper then or not. Yeah, no. I may have no camper. Or I, I may have a bigger one that I have to, that I have to put off that I have to put off site. Just be. I, I don't know. Fair enough. But I'd hate to think about it not being approved because you're concerned about it being there for 20 years. Because I, you know, I, so I would certainly be willing to do a you know a time limit if that would that would help. Hmm. Yeah. I'm also wrestling with the application for a number of reasons, but one thing that I feel strongly about is that we need to make a decision this evening. It's certainly unfair for the neighbors to keep dragging neighbors out here who are concerned about this week after week. And I think this commission has a responsibility, no matter how we feel, to make a decision one way or the other. Uh, this was went on th the second public hearing on this, and I see the same people here that were here three weeks ago. I agree. Yeah. Oh, 
you're, you have a cover for the camper, you said? Yes, sir. How far down does the cover come on the camper? <coughs> it covers the entire... <clears throat> goes all the way down. All the way down? All, all the way, way down. Like, wraps right around the bottom of it. What color is it? It's cream color. So it's just one solid color? Uh, yes. Mr. Uh, Chairman, um, the neighbor who just spoke, I was wondering if... Did I see you see the logo, the branding on this camper, if that... If the cover was on it all year round when he wasn't you know, was there, if that would help the neighbor or maybe crazy, a different color, you know, green cover or something like that. I don't even know if that impacts the neighbor's feelings at all on us. The camper's know. already cream color. There is logo on the front. And, and quite honestly, the cover's still in the box. I can't tell you with 100% certainty there's not a logo on the cover. I will tell you it's quite a process to take it on and put it on and take it off. Probably. I, I'm just looking at the photo and it says sportsman across the front mm -hmm. of this thing. Mm -hmm. So it's billboard-esque and maybe it impacts them. That's what I was going to ask them. I mean, that's, that, I'm just. All right, George. A couple more questions, points I'm going to make. Uh, you're asking for a lot. Uh, uh, in this change, uh, mm -hmm. you had several vehicles. I guess you're getting rid of one, basically, mm -hmm. right? Yes, and, uh, <coughs> you're trying to accommodate the situation better by lowering the lot, doing things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you are asking for a lot. Uh, you understand because this commission functions on precedent, and that means once we give something along this line, others can ask for the very same thing. Mm -hmm even if they didn't have one now. They could go out and buy one, put up a fence, do some of the basics, and, and uh, that might not be a good idea in town. Some parts of town, the larger lots in the southwest, the big lots can take this kind of thing a little better, uh, especially when it's not a corner lot, as the chairman expressed before. This is a big deal uh, for these kind of uh, it's my piece understanding. Of equipment and, and where they're located. Sometimes you can tuck them into that fire corner on a corner lot. In your case, maybe not so much. But uh, this is a, a serious matter So uh, for this commission to, to move in this direction that you're asking because of the precedent issue. I just wanted you to understand I understand that. That. And but it's also my understanding that the commission has in the past approved. I don't know about corner lots. But they have approved larger. I mean, there is a procedure for applying for a special application right in the. Oh yeah. So clearly, it's been approved before. So larger RVs have been approved in the past. So you could say there already is a precedent. Now corner lots, I, I, I I'm not sure. But you're asking for two items, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody's asked for that that I recall, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Peter, yes, no. Uh, if if they have, it's very very few. No, I I can't recall any either. But so you are asking for more mm -hmm. than the norm, and uh, I think yours is further up uh, than maybe some of them. Some of them, while well, we agreed in the past of moving them slightly into the side yard, that kind of thing. But yours is a lot in there, and. Uh, it bothers me a lot, and that's those are my comments, Mr. Chairman. If I can just add, uh, that I do agree with Commissioner Silver that we should make a decision tonight. Uh, but I think it just shows that the commission is open-minded. You know, we here gave the applicant an opportunity to really resolve the issues with your neighbors uh, you know, on a personal level, and I think as a property owner, you, know, you have individual freedoms to do what you like. Uh, but when it affects your neighbors, um, that's where. You know, I, I'm against that, and, and because of that fact, that I don't think I don't think you did resolve all the issues and concerns with the app with other neighbors. I am against the at least the your RV being there. I'm okay with the uh, boat. I think I think you resolved the boat issue in terms of screening it, uh, but in terms of the RV, uh, you know, my personal opinion is that I'm against the application. Do we have? Um <coughs> Additional questions for the applicant, or should we? Uh, are you comfortable closing the hearing? I'm comfortable closing. I'm comfortable. No, I got no. Okay. Somebody like to make a motion on that? I'll make a motion to close. All right. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, passes unanimously. Would somebody like to start a discussion or make a motion to start that discussion? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, just one thing. I walked in late, I apologize. I don't know if I've been designated uh, to vote or. Uh, you're number nine, so you participate. Okay, thank you. Uh, there, were th there were three others who weren't here last time, so. I was we'll, here we'll last hear. time. Yeah. Yep. So we'll hear from them as to whether they're if we in did, or out. I would be Just wanted to, to clarify for the out. record, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Are you in or out, George? I'm in, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm yeah. back in, yeah. Mr. Hughes? I, right. I, I really wasn't <laughs> out, you know. Jim? I wasn't sure at the point. Jim and, Jim and Dave, you guys refreshed, or you guys looked at the minutes from the last meeting and are okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to start the discussion? I'd like to make a motion to start the discussion. Okay. What would you? You want me to, oh, you want yes. me to start? Yep. I, thought I, um, I think that so. I would be in favor of the application if we had a time limit on it. I'm not comfortable having something there for, you know, for the, for the lifetime of the lot, of the property. So but. Is that what I have to say? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'd like to start with making a motion to approve application 1920-16Z. All right. For 120 Harding Street. Okay. And um, so one thing that we just heard, you'd like to put a caveat on there that it's got a timeline. Is there a timeline <coughs> that you're thinking about? Um, I think three years is, is appropriate. I think I'm okay with that. Um, okay. We... Uh, the application stands as presented, so the other conditions, excavating down for the, the trailer, getting rid of one trailer. Yes. Um, I did hear an, um, a cover, and I tend to agree. I'd like it covered it more often than not, and hopefully mm -hmm. there's not a big logo on the side of it, but if it kind of mutes the whole view of it. Um, and if it is cream or tan, it seems that it blends in with the house and the whole bit. And you know, my, my thought is because I certainly respect um, Mr. De, De Maria's position. I definitely respect that and understand it. Um, so often I try to put myself in everyone's um, situation. Um, I don't see the property as an eyesore. You know, it's, it's very well maintained. Uh, the applicant has gone through great lengths <coughs> with not just improving his property at the present moment, but also ideas on how he can even um, respect the privacy of, of his neighbor. And so often, you know, we, we live in neighborhoods. We have um, houses that are relatively close by. I mean, you could have a property by the shore and not like the view. And what do you do? You, you sort of try to screen something within your own home too. So in this case, in this particular case, I am in favor of the application at this point. Okay. Three to five trees. As presented, right? <clears throat> um, were there other things that we heard that we would want to make part of a positive motion? Okay. I'm trying to think. There wasn't really anything other than covering it in the trees and lowering, right? Yeah, two, two vehicles, trailers, two, two trailers, trailers versus or one trailer and one mobile home. One RV and a boat and a trailer, boat slash trailer. Okay. So I'll second it, second it because I'm actually there except I'm gonna make a comment that just is you know so we'll be talking about this three years from now I'm kind of hoping that we're not talking about it three years from now I'm hoping and, and, and maybe you know maybe three will turn into six but I'm hoping um, that the applicant decides a hundred dollars a month is not a bad gig because um, I because I really don't like the idea of it continuing and I might honestly change my mind next time if the property isn't being kept up as nicely and you know I'm not seeing there was a lot of effort put into making this look good and so I don't know if I'm still of the same mind three years from now kind of thing so that's my personal opinion but I am seconding it seconding the motion in a positive manner okay so we have a positive motion any other discussion before people vote on it I'm actually what do you want to do with the cover needs to be on only seasonally year round what do you think when it sparks air yeah it <coughs> when it's in storage when, when it's not in use Spark. um <laughs> technically no um all right <laughs> <laughs> sorry um 
let's just say, you know, let's just say when it's not in use. Uh, that's but during the six months, pulling it on and off is probably a pain in the neck. So do let's we, just say. Do we know enough about the installation? Because covering a boat, a large boat, is I'm, a very difficult and long process. Covering an RV could end up being similar. I'm, I'm sure it is. people, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know enough about it. I know. So, so if I'm, if I'm going to. Maybe he can work that detail out with the zoning officer okay. once he has a conversation about timing. And obviously there's a season. And once the season shuts down and it's not going back out in the road, then it should be covered, obviously, through the cold months and the early. But maybe during the year, um, you know, if there's not a time when it is going out, that that season could be continued. And I, so maybe having the zoning officer work out a, a time schedule with that obviously with the intention of it being as covered as much as possible to deal with the trademark issue might be might be a way to go thank you for that fabulous solution work with town forces 12 no six. 12 12 of what cover it no. how long are you covering well, they're going to work it out with town staff, but you know it's going to be off season, so it's probably going to be five months ish. You know, it's a November, December, January, February, March, probably. All right. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, say aye, and, ra and raise your hand for me, please. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to read them out. Yolanda, um, Rich. And sorry, <laughs> I'm drawing a complete blank. Ryan, here. Ryan, thank you. And who was a four? All right, and that was only four. And you? Oh, I was four. Right. Okay. Those against? One, two, three, four. The other five: Dan and Tony, George, Jim, and Dave. All right. Um, so it did not pass. Five negative votes. All right. Just while we're still here. Uh, so that means he can't have the boat uh, or the RV. So I would just ask you if you want to make a, if there's a consideration of keeping the boat and giving him permission to do that, um, I, I don't think it would be out of line for another motion to be put on the table. Um, if that if there's any way you want to consider that. So at this point, um, neither one of them, because neither one complies with the regulations would be permitted as it sits right now. And so just uh, be mindful of, of that. Uh, so I just want to put that in the record. Well, I guess in light of that, I'll make a motion that we approve the portion of application 1920-16-Z that allows the boat to remain on the property up close to the fence with the minor excavation that had been discussed to get it down Excuse below me. the sight line. Less than 18 feet. So it's in your front yard. That's the problem with the location. Okay. You'll, you'll second that. Now, what's this mean? We have only one item there, right? And uh, so the yeah. So the applicant. Second. Yeah, the issue is the location. It's not in the rear yard. Okay. Right. Right. And the applicant hasn't really made the motion or asked for it, but we, you know, can presume that that will be requested, right? So. Well, I mean, even if it's not, it can be granted. Right. Right. So, are there const constraints on that? No. Okay. And you're okay with that as well. No. All right. So we have a, a motion and a and a second. All those in favor of that, signify by saying aye. 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 I'm certainly. Is there anybody opposed with that issue? So that's 9-4. Okay. So that passes. All right. And that's it. All right. I would suggest you talk to Peter about, um, you know, time frames. All right. Actually, I suppose Justin would be probably the, the person to contact already. All right.
So moving on to the second item on the agenda. Uh, let's see, item 3.2, a public hearing for application 1925-16-Z, Michael and Michelle Benchico. And I apologize if I'm not saying that correctly. Seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.5, accessory use for an RV larger than permitted in a residential zone, and this is at 107 Harding Street. admit I'm a little ill prepared after following my uh, my neighbor here um, but we are my wife and I are the residents of 107 Harding Street we have been residents of town of Wesfield since 2004 we have owned a camper trailer since before we purchased a home in Wethersfield uh, I'd like to start by saying that when I did when we did decide to purchase the home in Wethersfield I did contact the town 12 years later I can't tell you who I spoke with but I was told over the phone that as long as the vehicle was parked on my property, it was not obstructing views from the street for my neighbors to pull in and out of their driveways, that it was acceptable. At that time, I was not told that there was a length restriction. Um, again, we've been in the neighborhood for 12 years. Um, I've gone to not as many great lengths as Mike and, and Beatrice have, but I have uh, brought in a landscaping company that has come in and uh, excavated uh, six inches down on the side of the home. They have put um, a gravel driveway down. It has been pressed, uh, or should I say, um, compacted down with proper irrigation so that it does not flood my neighbor's yards. Before I did any of this work, I did speak with my neighbors and then my neighbors were okay with everything being done. Um, the camper is 28 feet long. Um, I will say that if you're not familiar with RVing, anything 18 feet for an RV will not accommodate a family of four. It's just not comfortable at all. Um, I grew up RVing with my father's trailer, and my father had a 24-foot trailer, and that was barely enough for four of us. Um, I, my wife and I have been camping, God, we've been married 16 years on Friday. We've been camping since before we were married. My son was eight months old when he took his first camping trip. I make a modest living as a paramedic here in town. I can't afford to go on Caribbean cruises every year for three and four thousand dollars at a clip. But with a modest investment of under twenty thousand dollars, I'm able to get basically a vacation home on wheels where I can take my family on a vacation, weekends, you know, trips to the Cape that we otherwise wouldn't be able to afford because, well, times are tough. And uh, I, I know the comment was made that, uh, uh, I think Mr. Chairman said that, you know, that he would like to think that $100 a month for storage would not be an issue. Um, I, I would tend to agree with that if I wasn't looking at two children about to go into college. Um, and, and I understand that it's a neighborhood. It's not about me. It's not about my wife. It's not about solely about my property. It is about everybody. We have to share the space. We have to live there together. My father told me many years ago it was he'd rather have a bad year than a bad neighbor. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, but I have gone to lengths to make sure that my neighbors weren't unhappy with the camper being stored there. I keep the property clean. I keep the property properly groomed. I keep the camper clean. And it does. it's... <coughs> I hate to use the word, but it's not an eyesore. It's a fairly new camper. I've had one on the property now for 12 years. Um, and I apologize, but again, I was working under the, uh, the idea that 12 years ago, I was told that it would be okay to have it there, so I never thought to look into it. I have been told by Mr. LaFontaine that that was the case 12 years ago and that the, the zoning laws had changed. I did not know that. For that, I apologize. Really, all that happens. Yeah. Okay. George. Yeah. Well, thanks. Um, you said it's 28 feet long, and yes, how high is it? Offhand. She stands about nine feet high. Uh, well, no. With the suspension, she's anywhere from nine to 12 feet. 
Oh, a nine to 12, yeah, I could vary. Yeah, thank you. Um, can it go back another uh, five or 10 feet? And then I'll ask you a subsequent question to that that relates to it. Absolutely, I can, sir. What's that? Absolutely, I can move it back a little further if it needs to be. How about your view of your neighbor and your neighbor's view? And the one to the right. What about the view, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I walked back there on, on your property, and I hope you didn't mind that. And uh, I see your back, your porches uh, look out, and it would look out on that if it moved back 10 feet, for example. So I'm actually talking in favor of you're not moving it back. But, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, <sort> of. <laughs> I, uh, mean, and I don't mean to do that. I just no, no, say that's, um, that that's a real issue, and we have to look at every aspect of that. So. No, I understand. It Sometimes it's easy to move it in the backyard, per se, and then you don't have that, especially if it sat, sits down, and I I think it's slightly down back there, but I don't know. Um, if I may. Uh, oh, one other thing uh, while we're at it. Uh, the property line, is it right on the property line? Six inches off. Uh, and when, and when I the regs say five feet from it? So he's, he is asking for you to. Oh, he's the asking lo the location. It, <clears throat> the regulation is required to be in the backyard, and, and they require it to be five feet from all property lines. So he's asking for. Uh, all of He's that. acting for an exception to that. That's correct. Years it, ago, when I put, when I put the driveway in place, um, and my neighbor is here, Terry, she can verify her um, her now deceased husband. Um, I spoke with him. There's no written agreement. It was more of a gentleman's handshake. This is what I'd like to do. Are you okay with it? And he said okay at the time. And um, given conversations that I've had with her, I believe she's still in agreement with where the trailer is. Um, my only concern with pulling it all the way back in, in, in the backyard um, is given when we get really hard rain, um, the back portion of my yard turns into a swamp because of the water running off of the hill. And we actually, we get flooding at the corner of Cummings and Harding if we get good rain. And it turns our backyards into swamps. That's my only concern with moving it that far back. I mean, an additional five feet I could do and it would be safe. I wouldn't have to worry about it sinking or anything like that, but I think if I went any further than that, there would be issues, I think, with water. And it's there all year, right? Yes, sir. Has been for 12 years. So, so it creates the same dilemma that the last one did. It's not in the backyard. And what I think I'm hearing is that you can't get it in the backyard. I, back, get back, far, I can't get it completely in the backyard without it for fear of it sinking, to be honest with you. With the, with the tree, don't, don't the trees also? The tree would come down if that was something. You'd have to cut the tree down. If that was down. something, the tree would come down. That would right. be part of the plan. Right. Whoa, whoa, would you say the tree had kept come down? The tree would have to come down. No, it wouldn't. I don't think so. I look back and it's, I don't think you'd affect that tree. If I, had, if I had to back the trailer all the way into the backyard to get past that tree, I would need to Oh yeah, the across here. the backyard, you yeah. mean like, or, yeah. yeah. At an angle, but straight back, it wouldn't, I don't think. No, it would, or I would, I would be on my neighbor's yard yeah. because of the rooting system. And is, and is the shed directly behind there as well? Correct, sir. That would need to be moved if that were the... Other questions? How long was the trailer that you had just before this, that Cherokee one? 12 years. I had the how, how long? Oh, was, how long? Same size. Cherokee same one? size, sir. I am my apologies. Same length. <clears throat> same exact length. There's a question to to Peter. When did the zoning law? Did the zoning law change at some? Point? No, the the they, it changed in a very minor way. But you have always had the 18 foot uh, and the rear yard uh, requirement. I think that goes back to this. I'm trying to remember from my memo from your last meeting, but the 60s maybe or. Okay, so it's. Yes, yeah, early so 60s. 12 years ago, we had the same requirement. 12 years ago, we changed the, the zoning regulations comprehensively, but those specific requirements were, uh, that are on the books now are the same. The only thing that changed was that previously you had to go to the ZBA to get approval for these, and now they, they come to this commission. If there are no other questions, um, I'm going to ask uh, if, if there's anybody who would like to speak on this, please join us. Yeah, I do. 
but it's more technical. Feta, how do you feel about the moving the moving it back ten more feet or five feet or something? Or aren't you familiar enough? With oh, that? I'm familiar. I, I just don't. Yeah, with the tree, the shed, and I don't know. The tree doesn't affect it, in my opinion. I, well, I, I, don't, I, dis I disagree with you. If he but moved it into the backyard, you know, crosswise, I think. Uh, go direct back, that tree wouldn't be impacted. I, I should pack, impact the roots or something. Yeah, I thought, I thought from my recollection it did, but, um, oh, and, but it, and, and additionally, if, it, if he does have a drainage problem, that uh, that's another factor too, so. Yeah, I mean, the leaves of the trees are right over the but I meant five or in ten, the picture. Yeah. Five or ten feet, Peter, is not a problem, I don't think. No, I, don't, I think uh, the, the applicant think agreed to that too. Yeah, I think uh, where it sits now. Yep, I think push, pushing it back a little bit uh, uh, would certainly make it less visible from the street. Hi, my Thank name you. is Pamela Fitzgerald. I live at 108 Harding Street, directly across the street from Mike and Michelle. Um, I'm writing this letter on behalf of Michael and Michelle Pacheco at 107 Harding Street. I support the request for a special permit to park a camper on their property. I live directly across the street from the Pachicos and their camper has never been a concern or an issue. When the camper is not in use, it's parked neatly in the designated gravel location and the Pachicos take great care of their property and the area around the camper is well groomed and the camper does not bring down the appearance of the property or the neighborhood in any way. I'd also like to state, um, I took it upon myself after the last meeting in September with the Hammonds to drive around the town of Weathersfield. And I have a list, four pages worth of boats and campers over the length of 18 feet that I hope this commission understands they will be getting the list from me and complaints that they would then have to process. Um, I think that the board or the commission needs to reconsider the length of campers. Maybe back in the 60s, a camper, a pop-up camper was something big. Um, but nowadays, I used to camp, but it, you can't get anything smaller than that. In reference to spending $100, $125 a month to put a camper off site, I'm not sure where the people's income levels are. I'm not sure where you live. But the Hardin Street area, our houses sell for $160,000 to $190,000. My income is $70,000 a year. And I am a mother of two, single parent. And if I had to pay $100, I couldn't pay $100 a month. I have to make a choice. Am I going to have food, or am I going to pay my mortgage, or am I going to pay for a camper? I have not taken a vacation in 15 years because I can't afford to. I used to go camping because it was something that was affordable. And I hope that the chair, you know, the commission understands that when they look at the people out here and speaking on behalf of the people, that we are not the people that live up on the hill. We live at the bottom of the hill. Our property levels are lower than some of yours. And that what we do to enjoy the use of our property is completely different than what people with money may do. Thank you. Thank you. There's also a uh, letter in the file from the Barris Horn family. Uh, I don't see an address, but they describe it as a, or they cross the street, almost yeah, direct. But across the street. Oh, okay. And and this is perhaps you'll be speaking, but it's a letter in support of the application as well. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Michael Hammond, 120 Harding Street. Uh, the Pachicos live diagonally across the street from us, um, and uh, we uh, we can see the front of the camper, but it is does not cause any eyesore to us. Again, as, uh, as Pam said, they keep their yard neat and clean. The camper is uh, pushed back well into the yard and uh, I do not feel it's any issue. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, yep. we have to resolve two things. If, uh, he's, oh, I'm sorry. You can speak first if you like. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Trevor Horn, 102 Harding Street, across the street, diagonal by one house. Um, I'm in support of the special permit. Um, we've never had an issue with the um, site of the trailer. Um, frankly, I almost never noticed that it was there until all this came up. Um, maybe I just didn't notice myself, but. Um, 
I, we're in support and we have no issue with it being there. I just wanted to make that a verbal argument. Thank you. Thank you. I have two questions. In other words, if they set it back <clears throat> out there today, very honestly, and I'm speaking more toward their behalf here because I think the reality of it, you're not going to gain much viewing wise uh, by knocking it back five or ten feet on that side because the, uh, the hu their house sits up oh, five feet and then the houses next to them, several of them, up the street are set back as far as this vehicle. So um, putting it back another five or ten feet is not going to enhance viewing from the sides up and down the street. It might if you're directly in front of it or from the neighbor across the street who doesn't seem to have a problem with it. Um, and then the other thing was the property line. I almost don't think they can move it uh, closer in, and it seems like the neighboring property owner agrees it can stay on the property line. I don't know how the town feels about it. I'd like Peter to comment on that. <coughs> That's uh, completely up to you, if, how you feel about it. They're asking for the Not location. Fire issue or anything like that. I, I, I didn't hear anything from the fire marshal about that. Oh, no, so. I, I understand, but I doubt they have any issue. Is there a letter from uh, 101 Harding Street? Or? No, I don't know. Oh, she's here. Okay. Would you care? So we'll, we'll we'll try and capture it. You know, that's what we're trying to do is just capture it on a mic. Just thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. Sure. I appreciate your candor for being next door, but I asked the commission, what if a new neighbor comes into the neighborhood and resides next to 107 Harding Street. That should be considered because that, you know, a new neighbor may not want that. So, you know, that's my, my only concern. We're setting a precedent here, assuming the neighbor is going to be there for quite some length of time. She may decide to sell in six months. And here we are back again. So. Hey, thank you. Uh, remind us what your name is, if you would, please. Even, even verbally, I forgot. I know you were here last, last time, but. Where do I sign in? Oh, yours. What was your name? John Tremblay. Thank you. Crystal Street. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll address this gentleman. But the new owner would have bought would knowing that that RV was there, correct? Excuse me? <laughs> I want to bring up the point you're saying a new neighbor next door, OK, might buy, might buy next door, say, two years from now, 10 years. But this RV would be there when they bought it, so they would be buying a house they knew had this there. It's like uh, anything that's there, but when aren't you they, buy, you have to live with it. But aren't they saying that it's on the property line? What, what is the, the rules for a vehicle to be on the property line? Doesn't it have to be 
a certain distance away from the property line? According to our rules, yeah. Okay. That's right. That's so why that's a I fact. It up. It's in the rules. All but right. you, we so can make a an owner, exception. Let me a new finish. owner cannot accept. We can accept. make an exception to our rules. That's why we're here tonight. It's allowed, a special exception. Where it's located, it, they're all supposed to be in the backyard. They're all supposed to be less than 18 feet, that kind of thing. And uh, these are not. So we can make a special exception to allow them if they meet certain requirements. And if we're satisfied, they're not obtrusive to the neighborhood. So a new owner may not want that on their property line. Uh, and is that a, what you're saying? It's a valid point. Your point is, uh, is valid. Point. They may one. not. Yeah. They, they see it, but you know. Then they don't have. They may buy, see it. They don't have to buy the property. That's right. Correct. That's all I'm saying. Right. But and that could devalue the property. That's a possibility. Probably, but probably not, I don't think. Yeah. Right. It's difficult In the to say. Eye of the old, but, sir. Right. You know, people may be looking at it saying, hmm, I really don't want that in my property line. I'll give you $20,000 less. All right. We're, we're, we're into conjecture. We're not going to get into I, real estate either. So, but we understand you. No, I'm not. I'm just getting on to the point of what if. Yep. And, and your point is valid, Mr. Trembley. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Was there someone else who w wished to speak on this application? All right. Would the applicant join us again? <clears throat> All right. Are there uh, final questions for the applicant? You could uh, say I invited him up and then there's no additional questions? I actually did have one question. Oh, First, the, the pad or the, the stone that was put in, how far back can that be pushed before you're off that? Probably another five feet before my tires are, are off that and on grass. The way it's set up now, I made it just. I mean, you don't want to. You don't want to actually have your wheels on the edge, obviously. But right. So. The know. way I have it set up now, I have another three to five feet to play with. Um, but that is when I made the pad, I accounted for the stabilization jacks so that they would be sitting on that gravel also. Uh -huh. I could push back three to five feet. It would take one of my jacks onto the grass, but I could. I could. I have specialized. Um, jack stands that I could use that would stabilize it. So if it needed to go back another five, it wouldn't cost me anything to move the trailer back another three to five feet. That was kind of the point of the question. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Sorry, Dan, were you going to? Okay. All right. If there are no additional questions. Move or close the hearing. Thank you. Tony is seconding. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, thank you. You can have a seat while we talk about this. Thank you. <clears throat> All righty. Um, motion or just discussion? I'll uh, start the discussion. Um, you know, I, I'm struggling with these, as I'm sure everyone on this commission is struggling. Uh, I mean, we're trying to treat each one equally, but each one, you know, has to be independent because it has each you know, unique concerns and issues. Uh, you know, my personal judgment is I always look at the neighbors. Uh, you know, this, this trailer's been here for 12 years, <coughs> 12 long years, and, and it seems like all the neighbors across the street adjoining appear not to have any concerns with it. Um, I personally don't have an objection uh, to this personal to this a application, but I do struggle with it. I, mean, I struggle with this more than, I sh than the other one. Um, it's not in the backyard. It's not even an attempt to put it in the backyard. It can't go in the backyard. It's longer than the other vehicle. All those things, and it's over the it's over the buffer. Whether the property owner next door is okay with it, you know that that's it's wonderful for their person their relationship today. But I don't disagree with the comment that there's always the next owner, and uh, you know I certainly hope that if this passes, it's for a short period of time so that it can be, you know turned down as you know if the property owner next door doesn't like it next time that kind of stuff you know so I think it Com comment you know these are very troubling for all of us and one of the problems is is the way our regulation reads it's requires a special permit which leaves 
a tremendous amount of discretion on this commission. And I've always looked at special permits in the area of compatibility with the neighborhood as a whole and as you said, how the other neighbors feel. I think that's a big part of compatibility with the neighborhood is how the other neighbors feel. And we have to look at what's today, not going to be five years, um, five years from now, three years from now, or everything else. I think that was a good point, but we have an application which is pending before us today. And I've heard nobody come forward with any vehement opposition. It's been there for 12 years. It's not a corner lot. These are conditions, these are facts which change. I just have, I'm sorry, I have problems with corner lots on these vehicles. That's a personal thing I have, I'm sorry. Um, and it's something which I hope this commission can address in the future. But uh, that's where I am personally on this. Um, and uh, given the length of time that it's been here and what I hear from the neighbors, and I've driven by the house, I've seen the photographs, um, I have to take all that into consideration as far as compatibility with the neighborhood is concerned, dealing with our discretion to approve or disapprove a special permit. So, so that sounded a lot like you might vote positively for it. Would you care to make a motion so that we have a, an attempt to pass a positive motion? <coughs> uh, I can make a motion that we uh, approve uh, of the special permit application. Um, with the following conditions, uh, that we put um, a two-year um, length of time uh, on the permit approval, so that's going to be reviewed within two years. Why, why so short, Dan? Pardon? Why, why is that short? Is that what well, we're Well, three years. All right, Clint, I make it three years, but I wouldn't but I'd like to. I don't know. It seems short. Yeah, yeah, three years of the three years. Uh, I'll take it back with a three year. I also have a special condition that uh, the camper be moved back as far as it can be, uh, the additional five feet, so that at least it's as far back as possible uh, without going into the area which is soft um, you know, in the back. Um, and that is third condition that the, the property be kept. Uh, in a similar condition as it is now as far as appearance from the street is concerned. Um, so that basically we're looking at what we have today. No basic changes. Five feet. Yeah, do we, do we need to address the fact that it's in a buffer zone? Yeah, it was separate from Peter? No, because they've asked, they've asked, they've asked for it as it is, where it is. So it's, it's, even if they move it back, it's still going to be in the, in the side yard. Which is why I would probably be more leaning towards a shorter duration, shorter than even three years, because we get a storm, the tree falls down, all of a sudden the conditions change, let's move it out of the buffer as soon as we can. So stuff, you know, anything can happen, or a new neighbor comes in and we readdress it as soon as possible. How long are you thinking? I liked two. That's. That's what I originally said, but the difference between two and three is well, you, is you one. Know, you, you, let, you let George bully you a little bit. We're splitting hairs here. But I mean, I don't want I don't want that to mean that somebody has to come back every two years and keep paying to. I don't us, like it because it's how, how much is it? Two hundred dollars to come back? Uh, yeah, and that's three hundred. Three hundred plus that's, that's plus the mailing. You may as well pay to store it somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I can see. <laughs> I can see it reasonable at three years. We'll see what happens after that. Yeah. All right, so is that the motion of three years? Three years. That's my motion. Okay. And I, too, struggle. just like my other two commissioners have echoed about this. I, I, I favor five in the future. But, <laughs> you know, so, okay, so we have a motion with, uh, with, with a three-year period on it um, and moving it back. Uh, did I hear a second? Yes, I have seconded. You seconded? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody had. To be honest, I'm struggling, but apparently for completely different reasons than everybody else is. Uh, I'm struggling with the fact that we have to spend so much time dealing with these things. Um, frankly, I, 
I don't have a huge problem with the time length. I don't know where we are now, whether it's two or three. Three. All right, three, three's better than two. Um, I mean, looking at the houses and looking at the drawing, I think I'd rather keep it where it is because it's basically beside the houses rather than being an obstruction or an intrusion into everybody's rear yards so that, you know, where it is right now, one person can see it and they don't have a problem with it. But if you move it five or ten feet back, you know, it may be the, the new showpiece from everybody's back deck, you know, as far as, oh, wow, look at that. What's that down there? Um, I'm also a little unclear how strictly we're supposed to enforce a condition that somebody's front yard continue to look the way it is right now. I mean, do we have to cut the trees to the exact same height for the next three years and so forth? Um, and, and I guess more fundamentally, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling with treating a land use based on who can get all of their neighbors to nod their heads yes rather than have one of their neighbors nod the head no. Um, but, you know, that's the hand we've been dealt. Chairman, Rich has a good point. <laughs> no I kidding. <laughs> I said that at the beginning when I commented. I was back in there. I understand it. Can you say subjective? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, special permits are inherently subjective. And I think when you're talking about combat compatibility with the neighborhood, you're talking about, you know, compatibility with surrounding land uses, structures, you know, activities, not compatibility with the people who happen to live in your neighborhood. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with what my colleague says, except that I hear what the neighbors have to say, and I cannot lose sight of the fact uh, that in this particular case, the neighbors have come out overwhelm overwhelmingly uh, in favor of it. Um, and you know, I just can't lose sight of that fact. Yeah, I mean, and, and frankly, the only fundamental difference other than being on a corner lot is that the person who sees it most <coughs> intensely here doesn't object as opposed to the person well, who sees it most intensely in the last one does object. Well, my big objection is the corner lot. That has always okay. been my objection in all of these. So I think I've been consistent uh, <laughs> because it's not just the neighbors, it's people coming around the corner. It, it is. It is a different set of facts when you have a corner lot. Yeah, I mean, the one, one on Old Reservoir was a corner lot, yeah. and that was bigger than both of these two things combined. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, other point, the other point I'd like to make is that um, it's not feasible to, to park that in the backyard just based on, on the drainage and, and the, the conditions back there. So even if you could park <coughs> back there, it's just not feasible. So, so that just adds more to, to my reasoning for uh, being in favor of the application. Okay, so, so we do have a motion and a, and a second. Um, is there any reason for the people who made the motion in the second to be changing their minds based on what Rich said? Uh, do you know? I w oh, fine. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the, app, of the motion say aye. Aye. And raise and raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is going to be easier. All those opposed say aye. Aye. Okay. So that's <clears throat> two opposed, and it's David and myself. This motion passes. It's at seven to two. If I did that right, right. seven to two. All right. By the way, any of you should realize that you come back into this commission, and I doubt very much they're going to charge you $200 to make changes if you ever want to do that, even one item. Let's say you didn't like that setback or something right, this year or next year. You could come back in here. We have to hear it. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to the next item.
This is again a public hearing. Item 3.3, .3, application number 1926-16Z, Alexandra McGee seeking a special permit renewal in accordance with section 3.5.3, .3, accessory apartment, residential zone at 102 Fair Lane Drive. This is my voice interpreter. My signing interpreter too. My name is Alexandra McGee, and I live at 102 Fair Lane Drive for 14 years. I'm requesting for you to approve a special permit for accessory apartment. My mother-in-law, Bertha McGee, used to live in the, that uh, accessory apartment and has moved to assisted living. But she may come back home. If she does, I will not sell my house. I'm hoping to receive a renewal of a special permit for, for that apartment. Thank you. George. That clears up two of my questions, and my only two. Um, in other words, she thinks or feels or hopes that the relative will come back to the house. And she doesn't I, intend. Yes, my mother in law. I have to respect her wishes to come back home. Okay, and she, that's why. That's not a valid sale for sale sign in front of the house? I, yes, yes, I did put the house on the market uh, since last March. But my mother-in-law, uh, she said she may be able to come back home. So I'm respecting her wishes. Um, if she does, supposing if she is able to come back home. She asked for a special permit or renewal of the special permit. So in other words, you want to maintain the, maintain this because she might come back. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Oh. So when I, when I look at the plans, I'm a little confused about the size of the apartment versus the house and who and who's living in the main part of the house is that you Yes, me and my husband Peter. Thank you. Thank you. So the the previous the previous approval was for five years. Yes, I was here in the first time we moved in to Weatherspoon about two oh two two thousand two, and one or two years later I found out that um, an in law apartment. Then we came and we came for an approval and we were all set and they gave us an approval for five years. And then 2009 we came back again and asked for a special permit. And they gave us another five years until 2014 when it expired. But I never received a letter from the town of Wethersfield. I used to usually get one and I'd get all ready, get the paperwork all ready, mail and go to my neighbors, ask what they thought, and 
but in 2014 I didn't get anything. So we put the house on the market, and then we found out we had to come okay. and get a uh, special permit, and we sent out a mailing to everybody. Okay. Other questions? I guess a question for Peter. There have been no complaints or objections? No, the, the application was distributed to various departments. Nobody, I don't think we got any staff. I got uh, several inquiries, but once, the, you know, people in the neighborhood that didn't realize that it's actually been there for a decade. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the house is the Mendes' old house, and the apartment was built on the back side of the house when I was probably in high school. <laughs> well, that's been there for a while. 40, 50 years. <laughs> so, which, which, just bear, if you'll just bear with us, um, which brings me to the question that I had, which is we've been doing this as a five year deal, and I'm not really sure if that's necessary going forward. Um, so, if, if we choose to go forward with it, all righty. To just is, are there additional questions? I, I guess there is someone from the audience who wishes to speak. No, no questions. <coughs> so thank you. Join us. My name is Peter Formica. I'm at 91 Fair Lane Drive, diagonally across the street from the McGee's. Um, that apartment has been, I've been on 91 Fair Lane Drive for 41 years. That apartment spent, was there before I was there. That house looks the same. It's not always, the color's a little different, but it's, that was always there. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a public hearing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak on this application? All right. So, seeing no one, I won't make I won't make you come back up just yet, anyways. Are there questions for the applicant, or are we comfortable with what we've seen and heard? All right. So then, can I have a motion? Move we close the hearing. Motion to close. First and second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, unanimous. Okay. So would someone like to make an application? Uh, excuse me, make a motion. I'd like to motion, make a motion to approve application 1926-16-2 to its standing history. Alrighty. To do what? So, to do what? I'd like to, I would like to approve, like, I'm all for it. Okay. Approve it as presented. Okay. And, and we had a second? Yeah, George? A second. Okay. Um, do we want to add the restrict or get rid of the time? Yeah. Of time? Yeah. Do, do we? You don't have to be approving it. Yeah, so no time period at all, right? So yeah. we should be assuming that the property might well get sold, you know, someday soon. And, and this is in perpetuity, but as, you know, someone has already spoken, a couple people, it's been there for 40 years. Grandmother to live in the apartment. Right. So it's not. No. Well, I mean, and don't we also have the procedure where the town staff asks every year to confirm that, you know, whoever owns the house lives in either the principal or the accessory unit? Um, you know, so it, it is in perpetuity, but only if it's being occupied and managed in accordance with the regulations. So I, I think I'm comfortable with that. Thank you for that very important point. I, I think the only thing, Rich, that we were concerned with was rental property, making two family house out of it. So to, so to Rich's point though. Yeah, that, so as long as nobody isn't living in it and they intend to have a relative back, then it makes sense. No. To make well, well, I, I, don't, I don't think our regulations no. require it to be a relative and I don't think our regulations no. prohibit them from collecting money from who's living there. It's just, you know, it as, has to be as long as the owner lives in the principal or in the accessory apartment okay. that's permitted. All right. 
The fact that it's been there for over 40 years indicates to me that there's no need to have a five-year renewal period uh, as long as each year it's certified, as, as we've discussed. I think that's plenty of protection to the town, to the integrity of the zoning regulations. I, t I tend to agree. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? All right, passes unanimously. Ready? Alrighty. Next item. <laughs> item 3.4, an application number 1927-16-Z for J. Bellinger, seeking a review of a temporary sign at 1285A. Good evening, Jay. Good evening, everybody. Um, I was here last year and request, uh, I'm the owner of the Menasher spot located in the Golf Plaza uh, right down the street. And um, last year we had requested to just extend a banner sign for an additional four weeks during open enrollment, uh, which is important during the insurance season. So um, you approved last year and asked me to come back again this year to uh, see if we could get another approval. So we're back. Um, we are not making any changes other than asking for another four weeks to the additional four weeks we are allowed. Um, and after speaking with Peter, he stated that it might be make sense to talk to the commission about extending that uh, more from a year to year basis request to a three year request. So we're here this evening to uh, hopefully get your permission for a three year request, a three year request for that banner um, to help uh, during the open enrollment season at our business. Questions other than the obvious? How'd that work out, Peter? Last year? It was concerns? fine. I mean, the banner was up for the uh, additional period of time. I think benefited uh, uh, the business uh, in terms of getting the word out about uh, uh, the enrollment uh, time frame. So um, I, I think it's a pretty straightforward request. It's like two by 20 or something by the looks of the picture? Yes, yes. George? One quick question. Sure. Last year I noticed uh, that the sign had fallen down, maybe it was bad weather, that, not fallen down, the banner had come loose and was flopping over the, uh, you know, had to be re-secured. Uh, uh, the did banner, you remember that? The banner, um, did I imagine it? The, the, the banner uh, <laughs> came loose a little bit with the brick mortar, but that lasted no more than a half a day, it was corrected. Okay, so you'll make sure it's uh, solid. Absolutely. Okay, good, we that's all I'm asking. Okay. Just during that half hour period that he was driving around noticing? Uh, I, I did notice he was drinking coffee. <laughs> Other questions for the applicant? All righty. This is not a public hearing. It's just an application. Is there a motion? Motion to approve as presented. I was like pulling teeth. Thank you, Jim. Uh, just, just for the, just for the record, the three-year request. Um, oh, thank just you. make sure you acknowledge uh, that. that. 1927-16-8. For three years, and a, and a second, Tony. I'll second. Thank you. Is there any comments, discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. All right. Thank you. Good luck. All right, item 3.5, application number 1929-16-Z for Rocky's Ace Hardware, care of Kevin Bradley, seeking a review of a temporary sign at 192 Silas Team. I'm actually not going to grab it. Get out. <laughs> no. Well, Just looking for the extension to go to the end of the closing of the store. Fortunately, we have to liquidate that location and trying to do it as fast as we can. 
So I appreciate you're not Kevin. So who are you? <laughs> I am Steve Poulin. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Just giving you a hard time. Okay, so um, what I think I'm seeing are lawn signs, three by two or two and a half by two? Correct. There's, um, we put in for the permit, I believe it was 24 total signs. Uh, there's 12 out there now of lawn signs. Two larger banners that are located on the store, on the storefront that are duct taped in because uh, I don't like hanging signs myself. Uh, so they're, they're strapped to the building, to the columns. And then the signs, the rest of the signs are in the windows. So, so there are going to be more signs, uh, more lawn sign types? It depends on the sale. Uh, we put in for 24, depending on how foot traffic came through. Right now it's picking up, but it's not generating a lot more foot traffic. Okay, so, so I'm not seeing anything in the documents that show how many, right? Yeah, so is there something more to this that, that was it? It's just the length of time. Right. Temporary signage would be taken care of by our zoning enforcement officer typically. The permit covered so that. It's just all right, thank you. So then, then. How about the size, too, Mr. Chairman? I don't know. Is that an issue? Just like the time. Just to like the time. That's what I'm hearing from uh, from Denise. So, so uh, normally it would be 30 days, and and the applicant's looking for to the end of the year ish, right? So, 60 or 90 days. All right. You're, you're closing the store, so you're just trying to liquidate it out. Correct. Correct. So it may actually be sooner. Not looking by foot traffic, could, but it could be, could be sooner. The latest it will be is the 23rd. We'll, we'll be out of that location by the first of the year. And just for my clarification, where are these signs gonna be located? Right now they are on the building and in the, right by the sidewalk. So they're just Steve. The I, you did. I think they're out today. The signs. Some of them are out there today. I think you stopped by. Yeah, I, we asked your zoning officer. To, our zoning officer to give you a call. You have to need to put them behind the sidewalk. If okay. you keep them where they are, the DOT is going to have a twelve signs to add to their collection because they'll go along and pick them all up. So if you put them behind the sidewalk, and they're on the shopping center property, that's that's acceptable. Okay. Yeah, I was going they'll be there the same line, especially summer twenty third is going to be snowing. Yeah. Well, you guys will be long gone, and I guess the town will be picking them up, right? <laughs> no, we'll take the signs with us. I'll get them out of there. If I voted against this, you would still you wouldn't stay open, though. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be out of here. <laughs> Where are you guys located? <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. All right. Uh, can I have a motion? Take a motion to approve. Second. All righty. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Yep. No. Okay. Rich. Rich is a no. Yes, one opposed either. Hmm? Uh, yeah, I guess. All right. Thank you. You're good to go. I just don't want Thank that you. to be the good luck. predominant Thank visual you. image of the entire Celestine. You too. Oh, yeah. too. A lot of signs. There's a lot of signs. <coughs> and, it's, and there's nothing really in the application that says how many. No. I got the impression it was just a duration, though. So there must have been. All right. Um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, we've already voted on it. Is the zoning officer can permit that many signs just of right? I, I didn't know that either. So yeah, <coughs> all, all I thought they were uh, they were requesting was the banners, but um, I saw the lawn signs today I didn't I wasn't aware he had that authority either but <laughs> he, he feels he does so yeah I mean I don't, I don't want to make trouble but, right. huh? what was that <laughs> no uh, we tell uh, that none of those signs are permitted within the right-of-way so yeah. we're not gonna bless the locations there. correct mm -hmm. yep yep okay um, Peter. Does anyone have an extra set of those proposed RV? I don't see them in the packet. You got an extra set, Denise? Get those. Thank you. Excuse me. Here we go. 
I thought this was a good start. Yeah, so, so just uh, just to back up, we've talked about this once before. We've Anyone need an extra one? Well, Anyone? I thought somebody was looking for it. Okay. Um, we have researched uh, numerous Connecticut municipalities. We've also researched other uh, communities and other states, and we researched some um, industry um, standards and other regulations. So we've pulled together some good resources to uh, kind of pull together some ideas for you to uh, respond to. So this is uh, obviously uh, a rough uh, draft. The first page of the memo uh, provides you with uh, a summary of the highlights and then the uh, corresponding pages uh, uh, provide you with some of those details. The stuff that is highlighted uh, is uh, an area that is new or has been changed. And as you can see from the attachment, there are a lot of uh, changes uh, that are being uh, brought uh, for you to discuss. Um, so just real briefly, I'll go through the 11 highlights. Um, we've added uh, some clarification to the definitions about what is actually being uh, regulated here in terms of uh, the definition of RV. There are all different uh, types of uh, uh, vehicles uh, that are considered recreational vehicles. And then we've also included uh, a, a definition of boat, which would include jet skis and snowmobiles and other kinds of recreational vehicles that people uh, use and uh, oftentimes will bring back uh, to store on their property. Uh, so that definition of trailer has been expanded to be a little more clear as to what is actually being um, considered that the word RV is sort of a broader uh, definition and there are various subsets of that. So uh, that is being clarified for you. We've added a definition of boat, in tr in, as I mentioned, for number three. Um, we've added a whole bunch of new standards um, and conditions to clarify how uh, RVs would be uh, uh, further regulated uh, under the general premise as to what is permitted as of right in residential zones. Uh, we've clarified that there are certain setbacks uh, and there are additional standards that we're suggesting you think about in terms of the condition of these vehicles and things like that. Uh, I have, uh, so one of the big things to discuss uh, and, and was actually discussed tonight uh, presently, the length of an RV that the maximum length of an RV permitted as of right is 18 feet. We are asking you to uh, give some consideration to expanding that definition to 25 feet. Uh, it's still on the low side when we looked at other communities, but nevertheless, we're asking uh, you to give some thought to that. Uh, we've added a height limit where there is no height limit now. Um, We've added some language, which we found in other regulations to allow very limited and temporary uh, conditions so that somebody could use their RV when it's parked on their property if they were so inclined. Some people will do that. Um, <clears throat> we've provided something for you to think about in terms of allowing smaller, non-motorized boats, uh, things like that, to be allowed to be parked in the side yard as of right. Uh, we added some language uh, because there needs to be some language for uh, how we would regulate these things in multifamily developments. Um, one of the things I think many of you will be happy to hear, we've um, transferred the special permit slash special exception authority <laughs> to the Zoning Board of Acute. Zoning Board of Appeals in cases such as tonight where somebody wants to get an exception uh, to, the, to the standards. And then lastly, we've added some language for how um, we would regulate these kinds of things in business zones. Um, so we can certainly go through um, each one of these if you'd like, or I can respond to questions. Um, I mean, these are clearly designed to be a rough draft. Uh, if there's a general consensus, obviously you're not voting on anything tonight, we would take this to the next level, which would be to finalize the language uh, and put an application together so that there would be uh, a public hearing on this at some point uh, in the future. Uh, at this point, if we kept on target, we could probably do it before the year is out, if you'd like, or we could wait to the new year. Um, so, um, depending how you want me to pr proceed in terms of- Before that list gets in here. Yes, yeah. yes, the multi-page list. Okay. She's still huh? right now. A couple of questions. Um, 
One of the, the hardships we've had is the, the number of applications can continue to grow. Someone just said they have a four-page list of, you know, all these. So I can assure you that's probably going to be given to Justin, and we're going to be inundated with, with more applications before the end of the year. It's going to happen, but it is what it is. My concern with our old regulation and questions about this is that with the details, and I commend you for it, I think it's a great job. I'm, I'm very, very happy with what you did. A uh, couple comments, but I have a concern about why are we continuing this special permit process. You have, a, you have a zoning regulation. These are the limits. Once you open up these types of subjects to special permit, this will continue forever. We're just transferring it from the uh, planning and zoning to the ZBA. And I know that this, this commission has had problems. I wasn't here, so I'm just from hearsay that you're concerned what other boards and commissions do. And we can only be responsible for what we do. Uh, but by making this, I'm not happy with special permits anyway. I just, that's just inherent in me. I, I don't like them. Uh, I think it gives too much discretion to uh, a, a planning and zoning commission. You should be able to look at it and see what, whether you comply or you don't comply and don't put it in the hands of, uh, of nine people to make uh, subjective decisions, which the law allows us to do. So my suggestion is that we think about whether or not we need uh, a special permit use at all. And that's just me. That's, I've always felt that way about special permits. I guess, you know, my, I, I hear you. I guess my thought is that <coughs> if we don't have a special permit, the only other avenue anyone can go through is a variance. And, you know, I, I, I don't think any variance granted for any of these things satisfies the legal definition of a hardship. So everybody's screwed. Yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. Uh, but that's the purpose. You know, if I move into town and I want to open, um, you know, have a certain type of business, and I'm not zoned for it, I'm not zoned for it. I mean, as long as it's there and, and people have record, um, you know, uh, people who are legally here have RVs on their property would probably be non-conforming use. But the, and that's why if we do this, we're going to be besieged with these things because everybody's going to want to get in under the, you know, under the limit before the new regulation passes. Doesn't that just replace us all with one book? Hmm? And one person to interpret it, though, like that's the point. But it's is pretty that... clear. This is specific. This is an ob this is objective. It's not subjective. These are very, very real objectives, and I think it's great. I'm not. A couple of them I have some comments on, but basically, overall, 90 percent, I feel really good about. And that's that's just me. So, so, so let me let me clarify from my for my own purposes, how this would work, right? We're just really moving the same special permit process, this proposal anyways, to ZBA. So there's no variance criteria. It's just a special permit by a different group of people. Special permit, yes. That's, we're just moving the authority over to the ZBA. And when it goes to so the no, ZBA, hard, no hardship definition. We're actually moving it, uh, we're actually going back, whereas these in the past went to ZBA as a special, what they call a special exception. So we're giving it back to them with some additional <coughs> guidance and criteria about, you know, attaching conditions on length of time if they like and screening and, and, and things like that. So there are some added aspects to it, but in essence, the process is going back to what it was before 2004. So it wouldn't be a public hearing. It would be neighbors. Uh, it would be a public hearing. Be, same same process. They, they would. Have an opportunity to that's their opinion. that's correct. Okay. But it'd be one person making that decision. No, no, it would oh, be the zoning a, board of appeals. Board of appeals. Okay. Uh, the vote would be different. No, it wouldn't because it's not a variance. It's so the special permit special vote. Permit. Yeah, so it would wouldn't it would be similar? Although I think they have. I'm trying to think. They have five voting members mm -hmm. instead of instead of nine. So three to two would. So. And this is true that, you know, there's variances are very difficult, almost impossible to get. I mean, legally, I know, I know ZBA grants variances, and uh, I once sat on the ZBA, um, and some variances were granted on small 
two feet over the line for side yards and you know and stuff like that. You couldn't prove a hardship, but that's the way the law is. And we're putting a lot of standards in, but we're not putting standards in because you're giving the ZBA the authority to do whatever they want to do. So what's the purpose of the change? We don't have the to process, do it. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and the process is not changing, right? It, it, it's probably it's probably easier to get three votes out of five than it is to get five out of nine. Maybe. Um, yep. I mean, it's a thought. I mean, we're gonna make a decision mm -hmm. tonight. No, no, that's but, that's you know, right. It's just Mr. Chairman, I yeah. kind of agree with Dan on in many ways because I go back 40 years when zoning was more clear cut. These are the regs. These are the rules. And you do it. Special permits were not a big deal back when I first started, and uh, I'm not sure I like the flexibility I see going on with. Mm -hmm the big subject matter we're, we're dealing with right now. So that, so that said, uh, so take that thought and apply it to the second one we heard tonight. It and he's right. When you go to the <coughs> ZBA, they think they can vary things all over the place. Probably not all over the place, but within the reasonable rules. Whereas uh, maybe we ought to have some clear-cut rules and say nothing should go down beyond that. I think we'll everybody forward. knows where they stand. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person who turned down the second applicant tonight. The second applicant would not have a permit under these regs. No. Is that what you want? Is that where you want to be? I'm, I'm, I'm just asking. I don't. I mean, I think <laughs> board, obviously, you know, we need to, to follow these regulations. But there's a grant. You know, these people have been here for 12, 15 right. years. I mean, so you have to have some compassion for, exactly. for, for these neighbors. Um, so I think, I think again, you know, grandfathered in per se I mean not not legally but if it's grandfathered in they've been there but the new applicant because it's new because there's a new neighbor there that's why I voted against it because it's new uh, and, and but I also have a, have a comment on, on number five and I think you did a great job with these I'm mm -hmm. a little concerned by increasing it to 25 feet mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's gonna be a lot of people that are storing their trailers right now they're gonna try to stuff it in their backyard uh, to save 100 bucks and there are people out there and you know I think we're just gonna get more and more of these applications and potential Pandora's box by just increasing the, the, the length of these RVs. So that's my only concern with, with, with uh, increasing it. I th I th either way, we don't know, but yeah. it's just my gut uh, instinct. Yeah, I think if there is a thought or a consensus not to allow a special permit option for people um, extending the, the length to 25 feet, I think you really probably have to do. Because otherwise, Nobody has the, the, the folks who testified tonight, and I've done some research on some of the industries, there's literally very few boats and very, very few RVs that are below 18 feet in Is length. That the point? I, I guess that's for you to decide and you to direct me. If that's what you want to do, you're in essence um, not allowing RVs and boats pretty much uh, at all. Um, so that, that's philosophically what you guys need to tell me, and I will do that. But I just want to advise you that after looking into this stuff, there aren't even a lot of them up to 25 feet. Um, so those are pretty, when you start thinking about that, a, tw a parking stall is 20, is what, 10 by 20, 9 by 18? <coughs> it's not, that's a car. That's a vehicle, you know, and you're talking about that's what you allow now. That's really, as some of these people said, very, it's nothing. Um, even 25 isn't, you know, it's, it's certainly, obviously, it's more than 18, but it's, it's still not a huge thing, and there are not a lot of them. Um, you know, I was going to provide you with all that at, at the hearing when we get to it so that you understood and in, what, what's in context. But um, after researching this, I, I, you know, you, 18 feet is very, very restrictive. Um, and if you don't uh, kick it up to 25 and you get away with the special permit and you make people go to ZBA for a variance, uh, and all those people who are out there, and if Justin continues to enforce things, we're gonna. There's a lot of people who are gonna be in a in a very weird place in terms of because you, you can't because they don't meet the regulations now. They're not gonna technically be grant legally grandfathered because they never got permits. So they're gonna be in this this limbo unless we add some language in here about allowing them to come in and register them or do something so that there is a documented. Uh, evidence that they were um, allowed to be here and grandfathered. So I think 
philosophically we have to discuss that so that I can go forward and come up with some things that deal with that in between kind of thing um, so good points yeah do we so if they store them off off site are they registered still in town no so they're registered out of okay and if they're below 18 feet and they store them in their backyards um, they don't register with us either so there's no there's no zoning permit there's nothing like that right now so that's another thing that maybe they need to register with a zoning permit with Justin as the solution rather than come in and go through you know 50 special permit hearings for you to take care of um, so that's another thing to think about that it, whatever we adopt after this there should be some mechanism uh, and there are regulations out there where towns have dramatically changed their regulations and they allow like a one-year period grace period for people to come in and file something or get it registered with with the town so that they have some documented uh, evidence that they're allowed to continue to do that so that if the enforcement officer sees something um, you know they're 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 located maybe uh, within certain conditions Do obviously that's when there's a grandfather right yes. I'm just trying to figure out yes. that's when you're grandfathering something okay yes. and none of these are related to the size of the lot the quarter acre you still have a 25 yeah, foot yeah I didn't find a lot of uh, same thing. guidance on that I mean that is something um, that we could do it would start getting you know complicated we'd have to put some sort of a formula together and I, I, I don't know what how that would all all end up um, but uh, I didn't find a lot of uh, good examples I, I was going into this philosophically thinking that we would allow you know larger vehicles on larger lots but um, can't do that. It, it, well you can you could probably come up with something but it the range you know if, if we're, we're sitting here tonight saying that I think 25 feet is still too big and you've got six different zones and 18 is where we start today and 25 is where we end up what are we gonna get a foot for every I it just there isn't a long range it's not a big Delta in there for us to really go through the effort of having different requirements for different um, yeah, I mean, different zones has a non-conforming lot in a zone right you know yeah, yeah how do you handle yeah. that it just gets yeah. really complicated now, now I know why the West Hartford zoning official or someone gave you that opinion was more more honest than they should have been perhaps, yes yes that says we just if nobody complains we don't enforce right you can see right. why right, right. Yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. i mean that can <laughs> especially uh, they're going to get bigger and bigger as time goes on in my opinion I mean, well they are they have since since the regulation and and they're becoming stop. And if you look at the industry standards, I think the applicant tonight provided you with something. It's a growing. And our lots aren't getting any bigger than two thirds of town. They're not making any more land here in town, so. So it's not an easy. This is not an easy subject to, uh, to deal with, and uh, so, I think just philosophically. Obviously, once again, we don't have to decide anything tonight. We can, you know, you guys can think about some of these philosophical things, and we can we can talk about it at another meeting, but. Um, if we're going to go to, if we're going to go forward, I just need to make sure um, Because I, th I think we all agree the regulations <laughs> need to be changed can, can this be split in some way between the, us and the ZBA in any way any Pieces of it that make sense. To we'll, keep, we'll keep the easy ones where yeah. everybody agrees I don't know. <laughs> if, Every, every neighbor it. sends in a letter. We'll but do it I'm <laughs> to take A through L all that needs to go to the ZBA Z. Yeah, I think it needs to go to one or the other without adding confusion. Um, and as was stated, a, var a variance is a variance for something like these is a is probably an, it, none of them would probably meet the very few of them would meet the test of what a hardship tech legally has to be. So I which is what Dan said. So in essence, nobody would be able to go and get anything above the except maybe setbacks or something like that, but. I, how could you have a hardship for if because you want a larger a larger they, yeah I mean and, and right you know how can how can you claim that you've lost all of the value of your property because you can't have a 24 right. foot vote boat right in your side yard you mean <clears throat> the backyards that are a pat, pot swamp couldn't be made a hardship but not for the length of it maybe the location yeah. of it you could argue but yeah I mean I, I, gotta be I don't know that boats and RVs have gotten to the point of being mandatory accessory land uses in a residential zone uh, just uh, also Torrington Torrington went through this not that long ago and they had some 
contentious hearings, um, all the folks who were who would be impacted by the new regulations, and they backed off. And at the end of the day, so um, they backed off. They backed off. They were getting more restrictive in terms of some of the things that actually that we're talking about doing, and they decided after several hearings not to. Tor Torrington. I think it was. I think it was Torrington. Yeah, Torrington or Southington, one of those two. You know, I, I guess in hindsight, listening to uh, the criticism about my comment ab about how much it cost, you know, I probably could have and should have said it a little nicer. But, I, I, you know, when when you have a twenty-five thousand dollar investment, to tell me that that's the point they you don't were making. you invested they, this much, but and you don't want to spend twelve hundred twelve hundred a year, right? And to <laughs> me, that just it to you? insurance company will like it. <laughs> right. No, your point is well made, and he he just tried to nail you with. Except if we made that rule, there's not going to be any commercial places. They're all going to be full. <laughs> You're not going to be able to put anything anywhere. You would drive to Massachusetts to store your vehicle. Mm -hmm. Or point of Pasaki. Right. <laughs> so, so, you know, I'll just frame my comments. I, I think it was a, a good start, too. I'm, not, I'm still struggling a little bit with the 25 because I know how small our lots are. I mean, 25, you know, when, when the frontage can be 50. 25 is a damn big vehicle, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but, um, but, but we, I think we suggested 25 is probably a place to start a couple of weeks ago when we mm -hmm. said, go ahead and take a shot at and it. And it so was an effort historically to kick it up to 25 and they just the didn't want to do it. If right. we ever get into this, it's got to be heavily publicized. Mm -hmm. And I think there'll be a lot of people concerned. Yes, I, I, as I say, there will be a lot of, uh, but, but at least it's becoming more flexible. Quite frankly. Yes. So in, in many cases, it's becoming more permissive, um, um, depending on you, where you are. And and you, yeah, so I think you're going. I think you're going in the right direction. But there's going to be people who it's not it doesn't go far enough. Obviously, you never can make everyone happy. Um, and a lot of a lot of the stuff that's in here is just basic common sense. You almost don't need to say it, but then again, you do need to say it so that there are some standards. Um, so, so. the big part of what you were doing was to get definitions in there and uh, not leave people guessing as to what vague terms were meant to yep. be. Correct. Okay. Yep. So I like the flexibility of a special permit um, just because I think I think you need some, there are some places where it's fine, you know. Yeah, and I think the special permit, you know, these things have to be regulated on a case-by-case -case basis, as you saw tonight. A corner lot wasn't appropriate. The other one, you know, you looked at you looked at the conditions and made a judgment. So I don't know. I think you do need a little bit of discretion, and that's what the special permit, uh, special exception allows. Um, and then the, you know, ZBA just has to use good judgment and, um, you know, consider each one on a case-by-case -case basis. I, I don't know that there's any other, you know, and, and if someone does have a big property, uh, but certainly the commission will consider, ZBA will consider whether that bigger property, it's a lot, it, you know, it's more compatible to have a bigger vessel on a larger larger property, and they look at it in, the, in that as well, so. Um, yeah, I mean, and, you know, kind of to Dan's point, I mean, it is inherently subjective. I mean, you know, which side of your house has the fence, which side of your house has the tree, which side of your house has the, you know, the grade that creates the, the visibility, you know, how high is the neighbor's house compared to yours? I mean, it, you know, it, it's just a lot of factors that go into it. And, you know, I, I think to have a, you know, this is how big it is and this is where it has to be, one size fits all, yeah. creates more problems than it solves and you know i think if the alternative is people having to go in and and apply for a variance and you know and and being granted variances basically on, on a fictional basis as opposed to you know a special permit using some kinds of you know ascertainable criteria would be you know better than either saying you know you're out of luck or we're just kind of perpetuating the, you know, the fallacy that you have a hardship that entitles you to a variance. It, it would be nice, Rich, if you could set up 
a very specific set of criteria. They don't meet them, then they don't get it. Well, I mean, that's what we have it's, now. It's, but yes, we do and we don't. But yeah. we're making up rules all over the place on these things. Well, that's, that's to dance point. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and that, that's philosophically, where do we want to be? Do we want to, you know, basically have five rules, and if you don't meet them, oh, well, you know, drag it down to Rocky Hill? Or do we want to try to accommodate that's, people in that's town? The, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. Yeah. You know, to me, the, you know, a decision for a special permit for this is based on the following factors. If you can take some away some of the discretion as to what the, the body, whether it be the P&Z or the ZBA has to approve or not approve a special permit, I'd be a lot happier because the way it is now, we have all of these conditions. But they can throw every one of these conditions, any one of these conditions out or all of them and come up with their own idea. So what do these mean? And that's so you're you're back and what's going to happen is once we we bring this and it's going to be in the paper it's going to be reported on there is going to be a an unbelievable number of applications coming in i mean we're going to be facing this until this is done and you see three we're going to have five or six or ten a month because there are a lot of vehicles in town <laughs> I, I pages. Know. You know, pages it, 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 and how do you say to Justin, don't go out and enforce your own zoning regulations? I mean, I can't, I have a hard time doing that at the same time. This was I a lot easier when there wasn't a Justin. That's right. There. You can ask him to walk slower. Punt. <laughs> type, type those orders slower. <laughs> Doesn't he have some accrued vacation time? <laughs> 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 Um, so it, we'll close this issue out unless someone's got some additional specific directions for Peter. But there's no um, mistake that there's general consensus to send whatever this is to the ZBA. <laughs> Correct? Nobody, yeah, uh, right nobody wants to keep this yeah. authority. Want you want to keep it? No. Oh, we'll put you on the ZBA. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said give us some of it. I know, some of the good part. Uh, Okay, so I will, uh, I will keep working on this, uh, do a little more research, and then uh, start finalizing Good something. Job on it so far. so uh, we may end up talking about this one more time before uh, we put something uh, for a hearing. So. So, did, so did Peter do the good job on it, or did uh, Denise? Actually, we had uh, our intern do um, some of the initial uh, research, um, so the intern should get uh, on the back. some credit on that. That's right. Good job. All right, uh, we have minutes from September 7th, and George wasn't there, so George uh, can't do anything. Make a motion we approve them. Second. Any edits? Wait a minute. George, you weren't there. You can't say whoa, anything. Whoa, whoa. All right, all, those, even, all those in favor say aye. I can't. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It passes. There should be six of us here. Aye, right, commissioners. Here. Doesn't say who voted. Oh, hey, commissioners. Right. All right, so you got six. You only have six voters? Yeah, but six of us are here. Yeah, six of us yeah. Are here. yeah. okay. All right, anything else? Why is that uh, the um, stone and mulch place? Uh, why? You said that's coming in and coming in, and then you said now it's been withdrawn. They they filed. Um, no, that's what I had. They they filed with the ZBA because they needed some variances because they're doing all of that storage and they're and then they'll have yeah. to and then they will be coming to planning and zoning. To us. Okay. So it's a two step uh, process. The route. Yep. Okay. Just okay. a couple just a couple of other things. Um, to, we had a meeting today with uh, Mr. Tartaglia's attorney on the 61 Arrow Road. Uh, uh, matter which is uh, scheduled for a hearing in early November. They are offering a potential um, settlement, uh, so we are s still listening. Apparently, they have somebody who might be willing to buy the property, uh, so we'll keep you posted on that. But the hearing is still scheduled. We're continuing to go 
uh, forward legally because we think our case is uh, very solid. So unless <clears throat> the settlement addresses all of our concerns, um, we're going to continue to go forward uh, to court. You may have noticed just down the street the uh, vet clinic, the demolition of the, those two buildings is uh, pretty much completed. So they are um, trying to get the foundation underway. We're talking about having some sort of a... Uh, um, groundbreaking or something coming up uh, relatively soon so they're making progress on that um, the planners from Berlin Newington Rocky Hill and Cromwell and obviously Weathersfield are having a conversation about maybe having a joint um, training opportunity from the Center for Land Use Education they offer those training sessions for Commission members we would probably also invite the ZBA and the Wetlands Commission so we'll, we'll Having finding a, a night that's convenient for everybody is literally uh, an, an impossible task. But nevertheless, <laughs> if we if we arrive at a, a date, we will let you all know. Um, we'll probably do it in Rocky Hill Town Hall. Um, so, uh, if you're interested in that, we'll we'll certainly give you plenty of notice. So, uh, there is there are some training opportunities that we also sent out to the commission members. I think if any of you are ever interested in in going to those, the town will pay for that. So, when you get those from us and you see something you want to attend. Um, please uh, don't hesitate and we will cover the cover the costs which are usually pretty nominal and then lastly uh, you may have uh, seen uh, in the in the current that uh, uh, our delegation has I believe successfully uh, got, gotten the state bond commission to provide some funding for a developer for the fun zone site uh, for a mixed-use development uh, we have had uh, one meeting with the developer and their engineer which is probably going to be close jensen and miller about uh the site plan and and some of the obstacles that that site uh, presents uh, they may come in uh, for a pre-application very soon now that the financing seems a little more solid uh, so we will keep you uh posted on that but don't be surprised if you see that on a uh, upcoming uh agenda as a a pre-application they would like to use our mixed use regulations which have not been utilized by anybody yet so um, there's some language in there that we'll probably have we'll need some clarification from the Commission as to how they want to apply some of the regulations but we want you to be aware that that is starting to uh, warm up uh, a, a little bit college housing I'm not sure myself. Because it's uh, in there. That's so pretty if you much. Go to post college. Right? Like if you. Like, I guess if you don't go to they college, only, they only let you in if you maybe. have a degree. Or, right. 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 Degree at the door. They, they move out. They actually. No. The kids move oh, out of their parents' it basement. Post, post college housing. Yes. <laughs> so. Apartments where the kids can move out of their parents' basement. <laughs> so that's one. So one they're decorated like a basement. That's right. They can <laughs> skip college. So it's just post. Is there a plan on how to um, use the money at this point? I've forgotten. Is uh, is it is it OPM that the money's coming through? It's going through the uh, Capital Region Development okay. Authority with C CRDA. So they, it's not coming through the town. It's going through that regional uh, authority. Apparently, it's they have coming to the town next. Not coming. It's not coming through the town. It's is going to them. The first time that Capital Region. No, they've done they've done other housing. I, I guess the thought was since they do a lot of housing projects, they're the uh, the uh, uh, more knowledgeable than uh, than we would be so um, so so it doesn't <clears throat> it there's not a plan where you'll use that what was it five million dollars five million dollars to use it to demo the property and then and then move how that the specifically that five million out of the tw project caught 27 million or whatever they said it's going to be is going to be used I, I don't know that that has been defined yet so you know as is typical I'm sure they will break it into percentages and they'll give them it at different you know milestones and how that all works I, 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 is being left up to, between the developer and the CRDA. <coughs> so, but, um, you know, and it, was, it is five million, which is a good chunk of change. So I was very, very surprised that they were able to do that, so. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Do we have a motion? Close enough. <laughs> Second, all those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
Because it did work at one time, I know that. <laughs> oh, that's right. <coughs> There's a couple of them. Yeah. VPs, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's good. <laughs> 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 